We got a router, heat sink, Wi-Fi module, case, antennas, and a bag of nightmare fuel. This little critter right here is the Banana Pie BPI R4 router board. It's packed a quad core ARM A73, 4 gigs of RAM, dual 10 gig fiber, gigabit ether noodles, Wi Fi 7, 8 gigs of internal storage, NVMe, and USB 3. It's also exceptionally blue. Let's see what it takes to get OpenWRT up and running. The Wi Fi 7 module pops in kind of like a double barreled NVMe drive. Tighten down the screws, click on a couple of antennas, squish on some thermal squares, and make sure you remember to flip the Wi-Fi switch. All right, so let's head over to the OpenWRT firmware selector. We're gonna select the latest snapshot and download that SD image. From here, it's as simple as burning the image to an SD card, popping it in the SD hole, and going down on some switches. Now we can SSH into the BPI R4, update the package list, install a gang of packages, and give it a reboot. Here's a little tip. Most browsers default to HTTPS, so you'll need to hack out that S in order to connect. I want you to immediately set your root password, log out, log back in, and here we are. OpenWRT is ready to go. And yeah, that includes Wi-Fi. If you plan on installing OpenWRT to the internal memory, you're going to need one of these critters. Connect RX to TX and ground to, well, you know, ground. Now we launch Minicom, point it at the correct port, and with a fresh OpenWRT image in the SD hole and both switches down, power it on. From here, we can head down to number 7 and install the NAND. Now it's time to exit and power down. Kill the power, pull the SD card, flip up switch 1, and reapply the electrons. Mosey down to number 9 and install the EMMC. Now all you have to do is kill the power, pull the SD card, flip switch 1 down and 2 up, then reapply the electrons. Confirm that it's booting to EMMC, and you're good to go. Seriously, big honking warning right here. There's probably a correct way to go about doing this that just like doesn't wipe your settings. This is the opposite of that. So I want you to back up before proceeding. Out of the box, we get about 400 megs of storage. So let's make use of that NVMe connector. Under mount points, click add, select your NVMe drive, pick external overlay for the mount point and click save followed by save and apply. Now give the router a reboot. Congratulations, you just wiped your router's settings. You're gonna need to crack open a terminal, update the package list, reinstall Uncle Vin's BPI4 care package, and reboot the router. And there we go. Now I got 200 gigs to get up to a whole lot of something. According to Geekbench, the BPI R4 is in a slap fight with the Raspberry Pi 4 in both single and multi-threaded workloads. That means we shouldn't have any problems sending and receiving 10 gigabit over the SFP Plus ports, and we're seeing around 9.4. That's not bad. It's not maxing out the SOC. We still got some wiggle room. And since I know a lot of you skipped directly to this part of the video, hi, how you doing? Thanks for watching. Do me a solid, give this video a like so other people can find it. Thanks. The BPI R4 pulls a little over 9 watts from the mains at idle, but I want you to keep in mind this is with the Wi-Fi 7 module and NVMe drive installed plus active cooling. And this is normally where I would sneak in a sound level check, but the active cooler for the BPI R4 is silent. There's genuinely no point. Transceivers come in three flavors, fiber, copper, and ethernet with extra steps. Up first, this bit of no-name direct attached copper. No problems. This iPolex 1 gig Ethernet module, it picked right up. This 2.5 gig Ethernet module from Tenji Tech, I eventually got it working, but it was incredibly fussy. You'll have to manually set the speed. But moving on to the 10 gig transceivers, the one from iPolex, absolute win, no issues. And the same goes for the 10 gig module from Tenji Tech. You know what? When Banana Pie sent this over, I said neat and tossed it in a corner because it's a development board with developer documentation and a forum full of developers solving developer problems. And that's a hard sell if you're just getting into single board computers. And that's what prompted me to make this quick start guide just to get people playing around with the hardware. And I'm happy to report 
everything works. Your 10 gig fiber, your ethernet, SD card, internal storage, NVMe, Wi-Fi, USB 3, and fan control. And by the way, Banana Pie, great job on this fan. When it cuts on, it's silent. And there's so much left to play with, like these nano sims or installing Docker. Tons of cool things to explore. It genuinely reminds me of the early days of Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, in those days, I had a lot more time, so I'm going to have to hide this from myself so I don't spend what time I have tinkering with it. Listen, at the end of the day, if you're just looking for some hardware to run OpenWRT, this ain't it. But if you want something that runs OpenWRT, Ubuntu, Debian, and packs the hardware needed to get up to all kinds of interesting things, you're going to have a hard time beating the Banana Pi R4. Link in the description, along with a link to the full write-up on interfacing Linux. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments or the forums. But most importantly, I want you to get out there and make something awesome.